Google is the king of the internet, from Google Chrome and YouTube to Gmail, Google Maps, Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Slides and many many more. They quite literally control the internet. But ironically, the company that has connected the entire world together and the company that is infamous for not respecting personal privacy wanted to go off the grid not too long ago with their Google Island project in 2013. So what happened to Google's off the grid vision? Well, starting off, the idea to take Google's operations behind closed doors of course came from one of Google's founders, Larry Page. You see, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, the founders of Google, never really wanted to run a company per se. They were drawn to the internet because of the opportunity it provided to invent and innovate. From constructing clever financing mechanisms to offer more email storage than any of the competition, to funding a large-scale video sharing platform, Google has always been more keen on revolutionizing the internet than making money. In fact, most of Google's businesses are in the red a little, or a lot, as virtually all of their services are offered for free with little means to subsidize the cost. For instance, with YouTube, as of May 2019, 500 hours of content was uploaded every single minute. That's the same as 82 years worth of content every single day. I think it's clear why even with all of those pesky ads, Google has had a tough time making YouTube profitable. And this is the same case with Google Drive and Google Maps and all of their super cheap phones. Evidently, though Google is very much concerned about running their overall business profitably, that was never their primary goal, at least not when Larry Page and Sergey Brin were leading the company. When they were in control, many observers described Google to be run more like a research institution as opposed to a tech company. And that's exactly what they wanted. This was especially true with Google's X laboratory or their Moonshot Factory. The Google X Lab is where the craziest ideas like the Google Car Project and Google Glass were born. And though this was originally just a small part of the company dedicated to passion projects, as Google started to become a more stable and dominant player in the early 2010s, Larry Page wanted more of the company to participate in a vision he called the Google Island. He projected this vision in one of his last public speaking events in May of 2013 before he stepped down as CEO. Ideally, the vision entailed taking Google private and moving it to a remote island, though neither of these were really required to make the vision a reality. What Larry Page really wanted for Google was freedom from regulation, corporate interests, and most importantly, shareholders. Larry Page felt that our population was and still is way too negative and that this is especially true with the tech community. Thus, Google Island would not only give the company more freedom, but also all of its employees. Evidently, taking Google private and moving into an island would fulfill all of these ambitions. But Google Island is more of a metaphor as opposed to the actual game plan. Larry really just wanted Google to be able to experiment without having to be accountable. But as you can see, this never came to fruition. So what happened? Well, first of all, Google was already a massive corporation and taking such a large company private is nearly impossible. Today, 300 million shares of the total 673 million shares outstanding are float shares. In other words, these are the shares that aren't held by insiders and institutions who are never going to sell. Right now, the float percentage is 44.4% and when you're talking about a company worth $1.2 trillion, you can see why this would be extremely difficult to take private. Not only would you have to raise $532 billion, but you would have to convince the majority of shareholders with voting rights to actually vote on taking the company private. And I don't think the majority of shareholders of a reliable, fast-growing tech company would want to give up their shares willingly. Now, this was in the 2013 to 2015 timeframe, so the capital required to take Google private would have been substantially lower but it would be nonetheless upwards of $200 billion. Something else to consider is all of the employees holding shares of the company. If Google were to go private, none of its employees could liquidate their stock compensation. As a result, funding was difficult and it was unlikely that shareholders and employees would cooperate. Aside from this, not very many people took Larry Page seriously in the first place. The vast majority of articles that covered the topic made fun of the idea suggesting that it was ridiculous and very unrealistic. On top of this, many articles detailed that the idea was simply more proof of the gaping distance between regular people and mega billionaires. 
while many people were struggling to get by, Larry Page was over here talking about a Google utopia. Thus, Larry's vision was often just written off as billionaire delusion. And that brings us into the other major shortfall of the plan, which is that Larry's previous quote-unquote delusional ideas hadn't really done much. Aside from the internet and tech space, there's very little if any projects from Google that have really taken off. Google started the Google Car project way back in 2009, but today, Tesla is objectively much further ahead in the autonomy race, despite starting 6 years later. At least, that has made significant progress. There are several Google X lab projects that were completely abandoned, like their jetpack and space elevator projects. This is to be expected as these are moonshot ideas. And it's not that big of a deal as the Google empire can easily compensate for the losses on such projects. But that requires that Google's core business is strong and growing. And there was fear that pursuing the Google Island project would hurt Google's core business. Considering the significant opposition to the idea, it's no wonder why the idea didn't gain much momentum. But that doesn't mean that Larry Page would give up on the idea. Soon after proposing the idea of Google Island, Google would invest into a mucha company named Calico, which is focused on extending human life. Since then, we haven't heard very much about the company's progress in actually extending human life. But they are still around and I hope that they are making progress, as this is quite an important endeavor. Anyways, going back to Larry Page, Though he was unsuccessful making the entire company into an island, between 2013 and 2015, Larry Page would get Google to invest in many companies like Calico, which he believed aligned with his long-term vision. But as you would guess, shareholders weren't exactly pleased with where all of this money was going. In 2013, during an earnings call, a stock analyst would question the significant amounts of money Google was chucking at far-off research projects that had a high likelihood of never generating any revenue. Larry Page would reply that the analyst was thinking too short term and that he should be asking Larry to spend even more on such projects. After this encounter, Larry Page would never join an earnings call again. By 2015, however, I think Larry Page had a realization. It was pretty clear that he couldn't make Google an island, but he could make himself an island. After all, he had tens of billions of dollars and he could easily fund all of the ideas he envisioned himself. Consequently, in 2015, Larry Page would step down as CEO of Google and hand over the reins to Sundar Pichai. He would continue to oversee the company as he made himself the CEO of a holding company named Alphabet, but he would step away from this as well near the end of 2019. After that, we basically never heard from him again. He does still attend important Google meetings here and there, but he has completely stepped away from the public relations of Google. In the meantime, he has turned to funding a variety of passion projects privately, like he wanted Google to do. For instance, he has been funding a couple of flying car companies including Opener and Kitty Hawk. Larry Page has also poured tens of millions into Tesla over the years, getting as far back as 2006. He has been a huge supporter of clean energy, and specifically Elon Musk's work in the area. In fact, Larry Page has claimed in the past that he would rather give all of his money to Elon Musk than charity as he thinks his money would have a bigger impact with Elon. Meanwhile, the outlook at Google isn't looking nearly as bright. Don't get me wrong here, their stock price has grown several fold since Larry left, and they're more profitable than ever before. But it seems like the inventive spirit of Google is starting to fade away. Employees are beginning to suggest that Google's open culture may be closing, and just last year, Google dropped out of the top 10 places to work after dominating the list for years. Though Larry and Sergey's departure hasn't affected the bottom line, it does seem to have subdued the culture of Google. At the end of the day, Larry Page dreamed of taking Google off the grid as he thought that this would be the most effective way to invent and innovate. However, strong backlash from shareholders and the media as well as financial restrictions prevented his dream from evolving into reality. Despite this, Larry Page did try his best to refocus Google targets before stepping down by investing into various companies that he thought were important. Today, though he was unsuccessful at transforming Google, he himself has become the so-called Google Island as he sits back off the grid just investing in whatever he thinks is right. What do you guys think about the Google Island? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you guys hope that Larry's investments pay off in the future. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari and I'll see you guys on the next one.